Greetings, Earthlings. Now, I figured I'd try something different for this channel this time around. And if you've been around for a minute or you're new here, you see that I mainly blab on about deck techs and gameplay videos. One of my favorite things when I'm not actively playing the game is discussing rules, interactions, and synergies because I'm a fucking nerd. <laughs> now, I've been playing since Return to Ravnica, and to this day, there's always something new that I'm learning. Whether it be an interaction that I've overlooked, or how certain damage stacks, or even how certain abilities can be abused to its maximum effect. Now the point of this video, and probably a sequence of videos, because I'll probably make more of these at some point, is kind of about things that I wish I learned when I started playing that newer players or even seasoned players may benefit from. So let's jump right in. Now one of the biggest hurdles I had as a new player was understanding the stack and its interactions. Now I've almost always exclusively played commander, so it's usually a matter of who gets priority, what even is priority. Well, priority is the order in which players get to cast spells or activate abilities. When it's your turn, you get priority first at the start of each step and phase. If you don't play or activate anything, your opponent gets priority or a chance to do the same. Vice versa, like... Yeah. Priority also takes effect when you, whenever you cast a spell or an ability that is either activated or triggered. Now, let's use a four-player game as a guideline, because I pretty much only play Commander, so. You, as player one, get first priority during your turn, at the beginning of each phase and step. You can either hold it or pass it to the next player in a clockwise motion until priority is passed back to you. When a player is holding priority, no one, no other players may take actions until that player passes priority to the next player in the sequence. On your turn, you always have first priority, and I'll be drilling that in throughout this, because it's important. Playing spells and activating abilities trigger a different sort of priority sequence, also known as the stack. And you may be wondering, what is the stack? Well, that's what I'm here to... F the stack comes into play whenever a spell is cast or an ability is activated or triggered. During this, priority is passed in the same manner as changing phases or steps. The difference now is that a spell is initiated priority instead of a phase. So in the same clockwise motion, your opponents have a chance to respond or play spells or activate abilities of their own, but only at instant speed. And there's some things on the stack that can trigger abilities of cards, but that's that's a whole other thing. Now, when spells are cast and put on the stack, priority passes as normal until it passes back to the last player to cast a spell, which in this example was player three. Now, the order in which spells resolve goes in reverse order until there are no more spells on the stack and priorities pass back to you. As each spell on the stack resolves, Priority is passed in sequence until it passes back to whomever cast the current spell left. In this example, player 2 cast counter spell in response to your swift foot boots. But for some weird reason, player 3 played Narset's reversal in response to the counter spell and targeting said counter spell once priority was passed. Player 4 has no responses, so the priority follows sequence until we're back to player 3 due to neither yourself or player 2 having any more responses. Now, because of the order of sequence and spells resolving, we go in reverse order. So, because player 3 played the last spell on the stack, Narset's reversal resolves first, copying and countering the counter spell that it targeted. The counter spell then fizzles and go to play, goes to player 2's graveyard, which leaves just Narset's reversal and Swiftfoot boots on the stack, repassing priority back around in sequence until the second part of Narset's reversal triggers, countering your Swiftfoot boots and sending it to your graveyard. We're going to assume here that peop that players still don't have any responses to this, so that's just how that would play out. Now, there are no more spells on the stack, and priority is back to you due to it still being your turn. Another example is if you cast Swiftfoot Boots, passing priority in sequence to player 2, who then plays Frantic Search, passing priority to player 3, who plays Brainstorm. Now, the fun part about the stack and priority is you can hold priority, as I mentioned earlier, as you're casting a spell to be able to play another spell or activate an ability. But once said spells or activated abilities are cast slash activated, then priority is automatically passed once no more actions can be taken and responses can be declared in sequence. It's a simpler example because the spells still resolve in reverse order, but they don't interact with the other spells on the table. So Brainstorm would resolve, 
which then the active player being you can respond to, then frantic search, and then finally the swift foot boots. And it works kind of weird because priority is still passing clockwise, but the stack resolves in reverse order. So, yeah. Now, the important thing to remember about priority is that the active player, so the player whose turn it is, always gets first priority. If you don't do anything, like if you're just waiting to find out what you're doing, no one else can do anything. You have to take an action first. Now, lands and mana abilities do not use the stack as playing a land is considered a special action and cannot be responded to as it doesn't use the stack, which segues into my next topic, split second. But back up, what are special actions? Well, let me bring you back forward. The reason why special uh, words, the reason why split second is important here is because once it's cast, nothing else can be put onto the stack, be it spells or activated abilities that aren't mana abilities. Backing up, special actions are actions that don't use the stack, so they ignore split second. Examples being more for Mega Morph, Foretell, mana abilities, or ignoring an effect by paying a cost. And said actions can be taken any time a player has priority. Split second also doesn't prevent triggered abilities from going off, as they're a result of game actions being taken, and are therefore unable to be prevented unless you cast a card like Disallow, which, if you cast, if someone's cast something with split second, you can't cast that anyway. Now the last thing I want to briefly discuss, maybe not brief, I don't know, <laughs> is how triggered abilities are placed on the stack. If you have a card on the field with an ability that's triggered by spells being played, they automatically go onto the stack the next time the active player has priority, also following the rule of sequence. So the game will check for state-based actions if the conditions are met and automatically put the triggered ability on the stack. Then priority will pass as normal and if another player also has a triggered ability, it will also automatically go onto the stack once it checks that conditions are met as well. Triggered abilities, just like activated abilities or spells, can be responded to unless, as previously mentioned, the triggered ability is a result of a split second spell. Because even though the triggered ability can't be prevented, you still can't place anything else on the stack. So, in order of sequence, it would go cast a spell, the triggered ability checks that ch uh, conditions are met, which they are, so it goes onto the stack. Then you pass your priority. And then if any other players have triggered abilities, they would automatically go on the stack in player order. So let's use the swift foot swift foot swift feet bits. <laughs> let's use the swift foot boots example again. You, player one, cast the boots. State-based actions check that conditions are met. So third path iconoclast ability automatically goes on the stack. Now your opponents have a chance to respond in order of sequence. But wait, player two has Kambal on the field. How would that work? Well, because state-based actions are checked between actions, it would automatically go on the stack as well. So because you played the boots, third path goes on the stack, followed by Kambal, and any other abilities that trigger because of it. Now you have a chance to either hold or pass priority, in which your opponents have an opportunity to respond. If no one responds, then the stack resolves it normal. Counter spells do not affect triggered abilities, as the abilities are put on the stack due to conditions met. If an opponent counters the spell that triggered the ability in the first place, nothing happens other than the spell fizzles. Enter the battlefield effects are also triggered abilities and cannot be stopped by counter spells, but that's a conversation for another time. To wrap this all up, in conclusion, the priority, priority is probably one of the easier things to explain in the game. Like if you're playing a one-on-one -on -one game, you don't have to worry about like clockwise motion, it's just passing priority back and forth. But because it's commander and it's primarily a four-player game yeah you pass in clockwise motion and you e essentially each take your take a turn responding to something if you can it's in my opinion it's a fair way to play it it makes everybody feel included but at the end of the day that's priority and the stack and yeah so if there's anything in this video that you felt I didn't explain well enough or you'd like to start discussions on the topic, please feel free to leave them in the comments as I'll, I'll more than likely be making more of these at some point. Like, <laughs> I like making these kinds of videos every now and then and sometimes I take forever to do them and it's not that I won't, but I will eventually. I'm not putting a time frame on things, but I will 
at some point. So I, I like to try and be as thorough as possible. So I'll leave links to the rule sources that I used to be as comprehensive as possible in the description. But uh, yeah, without further ado, I'll see you next time.